All set. All set. I'll begin the session. Sir, are you, ma'am? Are you ready? Hello. 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 Sir, are ma'am? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I was muted actually. Not me. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. now I'm unmuted. Hardly now the audio. Okay. Yes, yes. So can we begin? Yes. Hello and a very good evening to the workshop series organized by MNET. MNET has put together a series of workshops for teachers and educators by leading experts in the field as part of ELD to explore some of the core co competencies using innovative tools and techniques. My warm welcome to the speaker, Mrs. Sarayu Mehta and all the educators who have gathered from different parts of India and different corners of the world. Your participation ignites and motivates us to push for better planning. And what binds us is the passion, a common passion to be effective teachers, educators, and research scholars who constantly try to upgrade themselves as an English language teacher. And moreover, it's, a, it's great to have a fraternity of teachers in India and abroad who are always ready to collaborate and share their ideas, experiences, knowledge, and best expertise to help build this community of practice. I thank the speaker, Mr. Rayu Mehta, for this workshop. So without wasting much time, let me begin the session. Today's workshop is on blended learning in the 21st century. Blended learning is an approach to education that combines online education, educational materials and opportunities for interaction, online and with traditional place-based place classroom methods. It requires the physical presence of both teacher and student with some elements of student control over time, place, path. With, we will be dealing with benefits of blended learning problems we will pay, uh, that they face during blended learning. Types of blended learning, the pedagogical wheel, and digital apps connected with Bloom's taxonomy to go with blended learning. And to speak on blended learning, we have uh, Ms. Sarayu Mehta. She's an English teacher. Uh, she has 26 years of teaching experience. Uh, for the past 22 years, she has been teaching in UAE, in Indian school Al Ain. She loves cooking, organic gardening, reading, writing, social media, networking. Uh, she speaks seven languages fluently apart from English. She is actively involved in school development activities as per national agenda of UAE. I welcome you, ma'am, and you can take over. Thank you. Thank you a lot. <clears throat> well, uh, it's nice to be a part of this platform. I thank Mrs. Renu and uh, Mr. Nadeem and the entire MNET and INET community for giving me this opportunity. Well, I'm Sarayu, and I've been working, as Mrs. Renu said, in UAE for the past 22 and a half years in a very well-known CBSE school, Indian school. The proficiency and expertise that I have gained is possible only due to the cooperation of the very proactive and magnanimous management and administration of Indian school. Let me tell you, I have grown a lot only because I've worked here and it has helped me a lot. I think you all must be sailing in the same boat if you're all working in such an organization. 
Well, my topic for today is blended learning. So before we start, let's have a, a small ice breaking session. Well, now I'm going to send you a link, okay? We'll have a small starter activity of only two minutes. I'm going to send you a link of a poll, okay? On your chat, please answer me that. In just two minutes, it's just a one word answer. Please click on the link given. And please answer the question given there. Which country are you joining from? Let's make it very fast. You have to just type. Let me see how many of us are coming from which part of the world. It's very nice to see so many countries coming up. It's lovely. India, UAE, Oman, Nepal. Wow, lovely. Very nice. Only two minutes. So we have only this many people. Okay, we have one more from Nepal. That's why the Nepal has grown bigger. Okay, India is growing. All right. That's it. So we have six countries which have joined us today. Fine, so we have the maximum participants from India, then comes the UAE, then comes Nepal and Oman. Well, it's very nice to see everybody like this. I'll deactivate the poll now. Thank you. Thank you for this. Well, now I'll start my session. It's nice to see people from different parts of the world here with me today. Well, today's topic is blended learning. Blended itself shows that it is a mixture of things. So I'm going to start now. My presentation. Okay, we've done with the warm up. Fine. Blended learning is actually a mixture of face to face as well as the uh, online technology. Children come to the school also, and they also learn online which is what is happening now. Yes, that is what we are doing now. But then there's a lot of facets of blended learning. It is just not what we are doing. We have to start involving and producing a lot of new things for the students to do, yeah? So the first one is a traditional model, which we are all doing. There are students in the class, there's teacher in the class, there's a blackboard and the teacher takes control of everything and teaching and learning is happening. This is, this is the way we all learned, but things are changing. Yes, now we have something called the internet. Yes, so this model where we face the teacher every day and attend the class is called as a face-to-face -face model, F to F, the short form, the latest term that we have learned, F to F. So this is the traditional model. Blending with that, now, due to the COVID pandemic, we have come closer to a technology called distance learning, virtual learning, online learning. We have different names to give them. Yes, so we don't, it means that we don't have to be in school all the time. The students don't have to be in school all the time. Yes, they can be in at home or in the school and they can work in combination of both these methods. This is exactly what is known as blended learning. It has started way back, but now due to the pandemic, it has taken more force. The entire education faculty has come together to see that this works and our students are ready for the 21st century. You know, the kinds of job that we do now, is not going to be available for them later on. They have to be you have to be made ready for whatever they have to do in the future. Yes, we are doing all this. We are learning it with great difficulty, but we cannot expect them to do all this because the generation itself is entirely different. Now, what we can do is the students can sit at home and access the online content. Yes, the teacher puts up her presentations and videos and etc. And then they come back, the children learn all that 
at home, they understand, they watch the videos, they listen to the teachers talking in the presentation. Then they come back the next day to the online platform and there are discussions, teacher discusses with them, there's collaborative activities in breakout rooms. Yes, and the teacher is facilitating and monitoring all the exchanges between the students. So what is happening? The children are growing. The children are growing in technical knowledge. They're learning to discuss, they're learning to collaborate. This is very important now, collaboration and teamwork. We have to teach them this because they have to be successful in the coming times. So it cannot be just discussions. You cannot just talk. You have to give them tasks. You have to give them project-based learning, task-based activities, collaborative activities, individual activities, assessments. Everything has to be done. But now, since we are not seeing the students at all, how do we do it? So we depend on the face-to-face -face model as well as the internet model, the online model, wherein both the things are blended together to help the students. In feel, I feel, you know, in, it's, it's a blessing in disguise because we all have also started learning all these techniques. I don't think any one of us would have even thought about doing this. You know, you know, it's okay, we will go, we will go to class and we we'll teach and come. It's not like that now. Times are changing. So you need to change yourself. Yes, we have to unlearn what we have learned in the past and learn new things now. That is our strength. That is the contention that we have to follow now. Okay, normally in the traditional class, what happens? Teachers do the lectures, okay? They do not even know what is the prior knowledge of the students. We just make a guesswork. Okay, second standard child. Second standard child would have learned nouns only up to this much. So third standard, we have to teach this much. So what happens, this results in lectures or classes which are very boring, okay, because there are high level students, very tough because we have the uh, low achievers and what happens ultimately the teachers end up teaching only the middle level of students. Yes, so, so this is what what happens in blended learning when we upload the contents online the students can go through the content at their own time and pace. Okay, and they are, they can study the content when they have the time, they have the inclination, and the, the parents are available at home. And the parents in parental involvement is much more in online classes because the parents sit there to see. Okay, my child has to learn this. Child has to know that. Yes, so that is more. And uh, slow children can take more time in completing their tasks. Those who have picked up can go on to the next activity. Yeah, they can retake the session again, watch the presentation again. And especially the students with special needs can give and be time to work out in their own pace, their own level, and they don't feel left out when the others search forward. Now, everything has got their own pros and cons. Yes, everything has got their own pros and cons. So what are the advantages? Students can learn at their own play space, Okay, then uh, classroom checking, you know, when we check our notebook, you know, the feedback gets delayed, but with online checking, the feedback is immediately done, saves a lot of time for the teachers, which can, you know, one to one interactions can improve. It suits student who, students who learn in different learning styles, like the WAC or audio visual, you know, or auditory reading, writing and kinesthetic. Yes, it increases collaboration between the students. Yes, increases parental involvement. And the last but not the least, the most important, attainment of future work skills. That is what we are trying to train our students into, to become sustainable for the future. Now, the disadvantages. All of us may not have a good Wi-Fi connection. In where there are two or more children, devices can become an issue, isn't it? Everybody will not have five laptops at home or five iPads at home. Teachers may not be technically savvy. None of us, I mean, we have not been born with computers, isn't it? We're just seeing them now in the past years. The infrastructure of the school may not be suitable. Parents need to be convinced about it because we all follow the traditional methods, you know, parents still want exams and, you know, writing and tests and all that. We have to convince them. Teachers need a lot of professional development. You cannot just come and say, I'm taking online classes, isn't it? They need to be trained. And thousands of children 
still now don't have the ubiquitous access to the internet. The continuous access to the internet is not available, okay? And like, you know, now I am also, I'm doing something. I know I always feel, my God, when I'm given a chance to do something, I overdo things. So teachers, you know, okay, this is there, that is there, let us do this, let us do that. So it becomes like too much, yes? So there's a great deal of additional activities for teachers, okay? <clears throat> now, as I say, don't make a lip build a bridge go slowly on whatever you're doing don't try to take all the things together okay fine now there are different types of blended learning models okay the most easy type is a flipped classroom okay which i think most of the schools are following the other things are possible only when you have a very good infrastructure a lot of money you know the school has a lot of funds to organize all this Okay, so I'm going to take you quickly through them and then I've got something interesting for you, some apps which I would like to show you. Okay, now the rotation model, wherein in the classroom itself, students have computers and there's teacher also. So first students sit on the computer, learn what the teacher gives them and then they come back to the teacher to, you know, discuss and do their activities. This is possible and is being done in many of the curriculums like the British curriculum or the American curriculum and even some of the Indian curriculums, I don't say no. So this is what is a rotational model. Enriched virtual model is one-to-one -one session. Okay, half an hour morning. Okay, half an hour in the morning, Adeline will sit. Half an hour in the morning, uh, somebody else will sit. Half an hour in the morning, somebody else will sit. So that is the way it goes. Okay, so teacher gives one-to-one -one session. Face-to-face -face is like, you know, teacher covers most of the curriculum online, okay? And then the online materials are posted and then the children learn from home and then they come back the next day. That is called online driver and for face to face. That is the model. The next one is the flex learning model. It is flexible, okay? <clears throat> Group sessions are there. Five, um, seven o'clock in the morning, teacher sits with five students. So eight o'clock, she sits with the next five. You know, this is very good for the high school level who are giving their competitive exams. You know, that is possible for them. Okay. And then the best one is the flipped classroom learning model, wherein the students, you know, read the study material based on the curriculum at home. Okay. Go through videos online and then they come back and they discuss at the class what they learned. They can even present through a PowerPoint. You know, uh, when I was doing a class, you know, I was teaching about shadows. So I had a student who came in and she bought in a PowerPoint of hers, wherein she showed me how shadows are formed. She showed me, she showed a PowerPoint to the class. She explained to the class very neatly how shadows are formed. So this is very exciting for the students themselves. They feel they have, you know, got the something of it. They got, they've been given the power to do something. Then the project-based model, you give them projects and you ask them to complete it with personal counseling and collaboration and they complete it, okay? It should be learning-based projects. It should not it should be learning to produce something, learning to create something. It's those higher level of Bloom's taxonomy activities. And inside-outside learning model, like the, like, you know, we have this virtual tours, right? The teacher teaches them online like this and then she takes them on virtual tours like we're talking about animals so the teacher takes them on a virtual tour to the zoo yeah teacher's talking about a dairy farm so she takes them on a virtual tour to a dairy farm so this is called the inside and outside in learning model so these are the some of the learning models now what i'm going to speak about is the samer this is where our technology takes place so it's called substitution augmentation, modification, and redefinition. I'm going to go through it very simply for you. I'm not going to complicate for you. Okay, we climb up the ladder. It goes up the ladder. That's why it's called SAMR, the SAMR model. Okay, so substitution. In substitution, what ha happens is, you know, the previously, uh, what do you say, uh, technology acts as a functional tool to what has been happening in the past. So for example, I'll tell you. For example, you are giving an essay writing in the class right? Yeah, but now what you can do is you can ask them to type the essay on the computer. Yes, so the task is the same, but only the mode has changed. Instead of writing, the student is using a computer to type out his work. That is called a substitution. You're substituting the work with the technology, okay? The next is the augmentation. 
Augmentation is what? When they could, now you have asked them to create an assignment. Yes, now what should they do? How will they take it to the teacher? Instead of having to print it, she can, they can just mail it to them. Isn't teacher, this is my work. I have typed the essay, please check it for me. So what happens when they mail it is easy for the teacher to annotate on it also. Yes, she can annotate it, she can check it, she can mark her comments and she can send it back to them. So what augmentation happens? Yes, otherwise if she's giving an assessment instead of writing on a pen and paper test, she can go to Google Forms, isn't it? She can do it as a quiz. So this is called as augmentation. So direct tool supplement, yeah? So that is called as augmentation. Now we come as modification. So as I told you, when the children email the stuff to the teachers, the teachers can modify it, annotate it, highlight it, correct it, and tell them where they have gone wrong, what they need to improve, and send it back to them. This is called as modification. And this is the highest task. Technology helps them to create. So now when you go step by step, they collaborate, they discuss, and they create technology here. So this is the SAMER model. I'll show you the SAMER, the pedagogy now, how it is formed. Okay, for example, now uh, the redesigning. Yeah, your class has been asked to create a class magazine. Okay, groups are given, allotted, subtopics are given. Collaboration is done, ideas are shared, they have to make an ebook. So, what do teachers, teach children collaborate? They research, they turn on their ideas, and all this together, they put it in an ebook. They make an app using a technology that you have provided them, and the ebook is uploaded in the school website or for the, for the parents or for the administrators and everybody else to see it. So, this is where the redesigning happens. Now, to take this SAMER model into effect, the Bloom's taxonomy is connected to the SAMER model. There's creating, evaluating, analyzing, applying, understanding, and remembering. It's all connected to the SAMER model. It takes the ladder up. The children have to climb up the ladder. That is what our aim is. Yes, creation is the highest model of the Bloom's taxonomy, which we are aiming for. So now this, in turn, takes us to the pedagogy wheel. The pedagogy wheel is an fantastic thing which you can go through. It has grown over the years. I'm not going to discuss all the wheels. I'm going to just show you the present wheel, but I will also show you how the wheel has grown. This is the newest wheel. I'll just explain to you how this wheel works, okay? You decide on an activity, okay? Your, the, the first circle is that uh, your Bloom's taxonomy words, evaluate, create, remember, and the verbs that go with it are in the second wheel, the action verbs, right? Then the activities that you can plan with this are on the third wheel. And on the last wheel are the technological apps, which are available online for the children to practice them and redesign those activities. So that should be your learning outcome. There's what the learning outcome comes. Yeah, your objectives, match with the Bloom's taxonomy and your learning outcomes matches with the last part that is the SAMER, yeah? So that is what it is, okay? So this SAMER model is very, very intricately connected with Bloom's taxonomy and the apps, okay? Now see the growth of the wheel. This is the latest one. This was 4.1. You can see how many apps have been increased in so many years. Yeah, the growth of the wheel is there. Yeah, this is what I exactly wanted to show you how technology is taking step. This is four. Yes, then this was three. See, many apps in this are still under use. I don't deny that, but there are many more apps added in the present one. Yes, and this is the second one. Yeah, so it has grown over the years. So how can you start? As I said, first you decide on the topic that you want to teach, what are your learning objectives? They have to be smart. Your learning objectives have to be smart. Then you pass, you decide what your learning outcomes should be. Then you plan on the activities and what app, etc. you can use for giving out such activities, okay? Let me tell you, okay? What app is successful to me may not be successful for you. Okay, so please try it out in the class. And let me tell you, don't depend on the parents to teach them all this. Take one or two periods from your class and help the students to understand 
what this is okay and uh, you have to take that is what i did in my class i take one or two periods and help them to understand what it is otherwise we cannot depend on parents we cannot say tell your father to teach or tell your mother to teach it's difficult for them we have to teach the students and the students will learn i have taught students as low as grade 2 or 3 and 4 to use such apps and so have my colleagues they have also done wonderful jobs by teaching such apps it's on us it's on us we have to teach them little patience little time they will learn it they will learn it children are very smart they will learn it then discuss with your teachers discuss with your teachers what you want to do how it works for you let's share our ideas that's what is important now i'm going to show you a demo of some interesting apps okay let me tell you all these apps need signing in i'm not going to go through all those factors okay i'm just uh, going to talk about the apps all of this need either google sign in most of them are google sign in please sign in with your accounts for whatever you are doing and then i will show you the steps that is happening so over to the apps now just a minute please fine now the first thing i'm going to show the first uh, the poll itself the poll itself is a kind of blended learning you can have in the morning i share shared some polls with you right sorry in the some time back that itself is an app called slido where you can create your uh, what do you say polls your mcqs and everything you have mentimeters yeah you have an app called mentimeter you can do a lot of apps like this and they are all free let me tell you we all think they are expensive they are all free okay so now let me take you to a very simple app called the lino this is a digital black whiteboard you can say it's a very it's a very colorful digital whiteboard okay now what we do is this is once you sign in this is what it is going to look like i'm not going to the signing part please once you sign in this is what it's look like looks like now i'm going to select a canvas from here okay i have already created one called blended learning okay now what you have to do is we have to create a sticky note okay you can type in your question there what is blended learning okay and you have to post it and this is my question so on the tag i write my name and i post it okay then what you have to do is you have to send a link you can copy the link from your browser and send it on the chat you can send it on the chat of your students uh, accounts okay i'll just send a model here okay so if you could click on that you will reach my page you will reach my page and you can type in your answers you can type uh, type in your answers okay so i will get the answers here you can take any sticky note from there anything and you can type in your answers and it will get posted here so this is a kind of a digital board which the students can use you can use it for assessment you can use it for your starters you can use it for your exit tickets yes and you can even add images can you see here you can even add a link to some place you can add your know, pictures you can add youtube videos you can add so many things and you can ask them to answer the questions on this okay so this is one of it the next one is a very interesting one called as a voice thread the voice thread is a creation app okay what you do is here again you sign in please note the lino doesn't need a students account but voice thread needs a students account also so you just ask them to sign up for the voice thread account okay now i will show you the voice thread which i have created first the one which i have is a practice session which i have with the children then after one week i had the proper session so i will show you how it looks like now i have recorded my voice to them to tell them what they have to do okay now i will send the link as usual copying from the browser on the classroom 
and the students can also record their voices. So all the students record their voices here. Everyone records their voices here. And then what we can do is we can even pass a comment on their work. So when you click on them here, you can see the arrow. Yes, I'm going to reply to Jilna. Okay, I'm going to reply to Jilna. I can send a video message again. I can, you know, record my voice and send it back to her. I can tell her, Jilna, you need to work on your pronunciations or, you know, all that. Okay, so... All that you can do. So this is voice thread. This is a very nice creator. You can use it for your reading sessions, your recording sessions, even your role plays. You know, you can conduct on this. It's very nice. And my children really enjoy it. Now, I'm going to the next one, the free online cloud generator. Now here, when you are teaching a poem and you want to teach them the main words of the poem, the vocabulary, a lesson vocabulary or something like that. Yes, what we can do is, Take this. This is a cloud. So it doesn't need signing in. Okay. It, it remains in the cloud. So if you sign in, it will remain in the cloud for you. Okay. So there's no saving. It automatically gets synced to the cloud. Okay. Now, supposing I'm going to take, go to the file. Okay. And I'm going, going to paste or type a text. So supposing I take, I have a dream by Martin Luther King. Okay. I'm just going to copy a part of this. And I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to apply it. So now the cloud is getting generated. Okay. The most the words which come very often get generated here. Okay. Uh, just give me a moment. Again, the same words come. I'm sorry. There's a few words are only getting done. You can change the shape of the cloud. You can give the cloud a cat shape. See, most of the words have come. Can you see that? It's got the shape of a cat. All the words have come now. Okay, you can give it a shape of a flag. So, you know, yes. So they get very interested. You can even increase the gap size of the words. See, so they become bigger. You can change the theme. Yeah, you can change the theme. You can change the colors. You can change the font. Okay, you can upload PDFs. You can upload word files. You can upload images. You can do a lot of things to create a word cloud. This is very interesting, especially in English when we have a lot of vocabulary, spelling, and you know, uh, main idea activities and all that. Next, we come to something very interesting called as the story starters. Very nice. Okay. Uh, this is by Scholastic. Okay. So what we do is here, we have to select, the students can select a theme. Tell them to open a theme. Okay, there's no link and all that in this. You can tell them the website, scholastic.com. Ask them to select a theme. Supposing now I'm selecting fantasy. Okay. I'm going to type my name. Okay, and I'm going to select my grade. Okay. Now comes the exciting part. We have to spin the wheel. I'm going to spin the wheel. Okay. So the first part comes, write a code of conduct. Sorry, it got, uh, write a futuristic story. Okay, so they are going to imagine and write. Mystical. Goblin. Who escapes from the dragon's lair? So, you know, the topic is created. Okay. So, they can think about ideas. 
<laughs> you can even give them ideas. Let it a com be a common topic for all the students first, so that you know they know how to write, especially in the lower classes. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. When you if you want to spin the topic, you have to just click click this, and the whole topic gets spinned again. Okay. Now I'm going to next. <clears throat> Sorry. So I have selected the format of a notebook. Okay. Even you can do a drawing. You can even do a drawing here. When I click all done. Sorry. Okay. When I click all done. Okay. I'm going to skip this step. It is just that it is coming. Okay. Your story is ready. All right. Now you have to just download it. Okay. And mail it to your teacher. So that the teacher can annotate it and send it back to you. Okay. Uh, I'll go to the next tab now. Because there are a lot of interesting things and I want to show you. Let me close some of these. Okay. I see some of them have opened their linos and posted. Let me have a look later on. Okay. Okay. This is something very exciting. It's called PlayPosit. Okay. Please note the website. It's called PlayPosit. Okay. Here. What we do is, uh, when you get this page, okay, you have to add a new bulb, okay? Now, when I'm adding a new bulb, okay, I'm going to add a video, okay? I can take a video from YouTube or Vimeo or, you know, anywhere, or if you have it in your own computer also, okay? So, I'm going to take a uh, YouTube video, okay? For example, I'm going to take uh, Henry the Chameleon, okay? I'm going to search for it. Yes, see, I get a story about Henry the Chameleon, okay? Or if it's not suitable for you, you can have a theme on chameleons alone. Okay, maybe it is linked to some of your lessons. Yes? Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Fine. Now this is my video which I want to take. Okay. Now what happens here is, okay, when I play it, okay, I can, what, uh, just a minute. Yeah, done. Okay, now your video is getting added here, fine. Now I'm going to add an interaction. Okay, so when we play it, when we play, you can add a multiple choice question. You can stop at 20 seconds or something. You can, you know, add a question. What is a chameleon? Sorry. Done. Okay, you must give it a correct answer. Fine. So this way, what happens is, I'm not going to waste much time on this teachers. I'm so sorry. I would love to teach you a lot of things, but we have time constraints. So at seven seconds, this interaction gets added and this question automatically gets popped up at that time and the children can answer the question at that time. You can ask them orally or you can send the link to them and they can type the answers there. Please do try it out. Okay, you can try it out at your leisure so that you are able to do it properly. Okay, this is called as play person and I love it because it's very, very interesting. Okay, uh, next is called Lumen 5. Okay, here also, this is an exciting one. Here you can convert your text into videos. I'll show you what I did. You can convert your text into videos. So you take any text, supposing you have a story in your book. Okay, and you want them to create a video out of it. Yes, you can tie ask. Uh, so you see, I have copied and pasted the story of a chameleon here. Okay, and what has happened is it has generated. I'm going to publish it. Can you see this? 
it has generated the story very nicely. go to the next one so it gives you the effects and you know it uh, should, of course when it is completely published you will get the video in a single stretch okay so it talks about chameleons not being able to see objects it talks about uh, so many things so they are they are no ordinary reptiles so it creates a story by itself according to the text that you have provided okay you can add music okay you can change the style of it Yes, you can stain the style of your video presentation. This is an excellent one. Children just enjoy doing it. Okay, please try it. Uh, next one, I will go to mind mapping. This is called mindfor2.com. It's not mind42. It's mind42. As usual, we register and then we create, we get to this page. You can add a new group where you can give, create a group name, say adjectives or nouns or, you know, whatever you want, okay? And then you create a new mind map for that. So I'm going to create the mind map called adjectives, okay? So see, now the mind map is created here, okay? Now we click on this, there's a plus sign here. So automatically the node gets added, okay? Size. Okay, we can again click the next one has come. Shape. Again, click on this. Color. Okay. Again, click on this. Number. So this way the mind map gets created. You know, mind mapping is very important. I remember Mr. Ron Moran on the other workshop a couple of weeks ago spoke about mind mapping. It's a very important aspect for students. It, it takes them step by step through the processes, isn't it? Here again, you can add a picture. You can add an image, okay, and ask them to describe that in a mind map, okay? And uh, you can even add a link, okay? You can even, you know, add, change the colors. You can do so many things there. It's a free app. There's nothing, it's no, it's not charged. So it's completely free, which you can use it in your classrooms. Uh, I think everybody must be aware of Plickers. Okay, Plickers is another app. Uh, I think it's uh, almost time for me to stop for uh, the other session to carry on. There are many more apps, teachers. Plickers is something which you use. Oh, ma'am, you can, you can continue for 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Renu. Yeah, uh, Plickers is an app wherein you have to download the app on your mobile as well as your computer. Okay, so when you download that, okay, you get a site like this. You can add your class, like I have added. Okay, and I create a quiz. Okay, the students are given something like a barcode card in their hand. Every barcode has got one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D, something written on it. Okay, the barcode I will uh, show you on my slide. The barcodes look, you know, something in a very haphazardly shape. They're very uh, differently shaped uh, barcodes. So when you ask a question, okay, when you ask a question on the computer, when you ask a question, the students have to put up the answer, correct answer. If it is A, they have to put up the A card. So automatically what happens on the board is the children who have answered it correctly comes on your whiteboard if you're presenting it. Okay, the students also see. The students also see it. Okay, so you can create a new set like this. You can add your students for every class, okay? And then you, uh, what you say, grade it. You can grade it as per their, uh, this one. Everything gets done. It's a very interesting activity. It's a little long to explain. If I had a chance, I would have explained to you. If I get another chance, definitely I'll come forward and explain to you. So I have this activity here. I'm going to play now. So here, what happens is the first stage of a butterfly's life cycle, yes? So the children put up their cards and I scan the answers with my mobile app. I have the app, isn't it? The Plickers app. So I scan the app with my mobile. 
and the answers come on my projector screen. So, you know, children know if the answer is all right, they get green. The names of the students also come because you have added the names here. It's a very nice assessment tool. Children enjoy it thoroughly because they're so excited to see their names become green and they, 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 they're sad to see their names become red. And you are using technology. If this is possible, please let me tell you, this is possible in online classes also because the barcode gets scanned very easily even through the laptop screen. When the child shows the barcode, it gets scanned. So that's one advantage. You can use this app when you're doing, you know, face to face plus online. You know, you can do that also. It's very interesting app. I hope you all will try it. Uh, let me go to the next app now. Okay. All right. Yes. Now we come to wordwall.com. This is a very exciting uh, thing. I think many of you must be using it. The random wheel maker and all that. Okay. I'm going to create an activity now. Okay, uh, just move this. Okay. Yeah, see, now when I create an activity, okay, this is a paid app. Okay, let me tell you that, but it doesn't cost much. Okay, it is around, uh, I'll tell you, 250 rupees in India. It's about uh, 18 dirhams in UAE. What you can do is you can three or four teachers can club together. I mean, if you don't uh, mind spending money, you can club together or you can even ask your school to fund you for this, isn't it? It's very important. Yeah, so that you can, once you get uh, pay for it, you are able to use uh, unlimited times of this thing, okay? And you can create a matchup, a random wheel, okay? Quiz, hangman, open the box, anagrams, balloon pops, a lot of games can be created here. Now, supposing it's a random wheel, yeah, so I'm going to add the questions, okay? All right, now I'm going to add another item. I'm going to add another item. And an item. All right. Okay. Fine. Now it's creating. Okay. Fine. Now the same questions can be changed to random cards, open the box, anagram, etc. Okay. Now I'm going to start. Okay. I'm going to spin the question. Okay, the question is, what is flipped classroom? So you can ask this question to your students. Yeah, you can ask this question to your students and ask them to answer you, okay? <laughs> Instead, you can even enter your children's name in this, okay? And then you can choose the selector, select the students to answer the question, right? Now the same questions, okay? See, it's spinning now. Which, why is technology important? Okay, now the same things you can convert to random cards also. Okay, sorry, one second. Yeah, so now these questions have converted to cards. Okay, so now I'm going to deal the cards. So here comes, what is summer? Okay, I'm going to shuffle the cards. This, these things are exciting for the children to see, isn't it? So they take more interest to do it. They also want to learn. Yes, they will definitely go home and learn, isn't it? Then there is open the box. Here in open the box, you can, you know, even add themes. You can, if you have a spooky story, you can change the thing to spooky. Okay, you can make it a little scary and all. Okay, you can even embed the code and send it to them. Okay, so open the box. What is flipped classroom? So the question comes. So very exciting. Yeah. So this is something very exciting. Then I go to uh, quizzes. Many of you must be using it again, but uh, 
<laughs> this is entirely free again. There are millions of quiz available in the website itself. You don't have to create it. Okay, supposing I'm searching for uh, my shadow. There are so many questions which come up. There is a poem, there are questions, okay? There are, uh, you can uh, assign it to the Google Classroom or you can even assign it to any other learning platform. See, the questions have come here. What does the speaker shadow do when he jumps into the bed? So what you can do is, you have to ask the students also to register. So once they register, you can assign this to the class, okay? You can assign it to the class. All right, you can send the link to the class. So let me see, where is the assign option? Okay, view full, full quiz. Yes, here comes. Can you see this? Yeah, here comes the full quiz. You can assign as homework or you can play live also. You can play live also. You can send the link in the classroom or you can assign it as a homework. So when you assign it as a homework, you can give a completion date, etc., And then you can select your options whatever you want and then continue okay you can assign it to google classroom also okay so see can you see the share a link to the because i have already signed in for google classroom that is why it is showing okay so i can share a link to my google classroom see there is teams there is Coology. okay so i have my classes here I can assign it to any of those classes. If I assign it now, my students will start calling me, so I'm not assigning it. Okay, so you can assign it and the children can view it and they can do it. Okay, so this is another type of assessment that you can do. Then you have your Quizlet. Quizlet is again like quizzes. Here also you can create your quizzes or there are ready-made quizzes also available for many topics which are common to our lessons. Okay, so this is also Quizlet. Once you create the Quizlet, you can, it can uh, become like a flashcard quiz or it can become like a spell quiz. <laughs> it can, you know, <laughs> it, so many things can be done here. Okay. See? So when I click the card, they'll be able to see the definition. Okay. So who was the poet of my shadow? Or can you describe the rhyme scheme of the first stanza? So... I will, the answers are here. So this is something very interesting for them to do online with you in the class itself. Okay. I hope you all enjoyed this. And uh, I think I'll stop now. I hope you all really enjoyed it. I'm sorry if I went very fast or something. I would like to show you a lot more things. Let me get an opportunity next time and I will surely do it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Renu. So it was really a wonderful session and uh, you have shown a very um, different type of presentation uh, with all the different apps, especially your um, uh, right? Yes, I'm Sema. pronouncing it, Sema, yes, right? yes, it was, yes, ma'am. It yes, was yes. a very uh, fantastic um, concept in itself. Thank um, you, ma'am. And it really showed the type of flip thinking that I was having in my mind. I had a sort of uh, thought of blended uh, learning, but uh, most of the apps that uh, we were having throughout in the webinar, I was not, going, I was not uh, uh, able to blend it. It yeah. was not really coming to my mind uh, because though uh, everyone see, was talking about blended learning, flipped classroom, but exactly how to put it in, 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 a sort of, in this pandemic situation in the online setting, was yes, uh, not coming out practically. Yes. But uh, your session was uh, really very practical. And uh, I feel um, after going home, all the participants will uh, try to practice. Uh, <laughs> after seeing, they'll come back to the YouTube channel and they'll try to find out the various apps. And they have requested for the, um, for the PPT also. Sure. So I will, yeah. So uh, sure. I will try to put it on the uh, Facebook uh, all right, website. Yes, yes. So sure. y'all can go and see over yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, uh, before I end, Mrs. Renu, I just want to show them one last slide. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have put in a collection of some important websites for you. 
okay uh, you can go through this there are excellent apps in this which will give you an idea especially the first one blogs.umass.edu there are online tools when you click on that it shows you where it is connected to blooms where it is connected to the samer model and uh, the apps that can be used for this <clears throat> believe me most of these apps are free okay most of these apps are free please do try it on and the last one okay it's an interactive blooms digital taxonomy it's a pdf when you click on the apps the apps automatically open so that is also one of a very good websites so please go through it and enjoy it and i'm so happy that i could share all this with you and uh, i'm i am i hope everyone enjoyed it thank you so much i did not get much much question but one question was there where they said what should be the length of the video that you had used for uh, chameleon See, the length of the video it can be any they have not uh, what you say told any na or uh, size or length or anything you know it can be any length it can be any length what okay. i suggested you make it you know uh, if it's a long lesson we don't do all together right so what you teach in class it only that much length. you put it can be any length what i you are not able to see the screen is it yeah we are able to see the screen then somebody uh, saying not able to see the screen the website is not visible acha the, the website ma'am shared the website uh, that is not visible it's on the slide can you see my slide uh, there's a barcode there's a barcode your event okay. is ready no one second ma'am let me just see what has happened <laughs> okay uh, i am running another poll okay before i will just when i'm running the poll i'll open the presentation once again okay i'm sending it on the chat that's my plenary i want to know where i should do better okay so please answer that question for me thank you meanwhile i will just run my slide again i'll stop sharing and i'll again share my slide Yeah, can you all see the screen now? Mm -hmm. Now we can. See. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, these are the apps. I... These are the apps. Okay, these are the websites for the apps. You can visit them. Okay, they will give you a lot of insight of all the apps available for blended learning and how do you integrate them. They're very simple. Given an opportunity, I will show you many more. I mean, I'm I've got lots of things to show you, but then you know, time constraints always stop us from doing a lot of things. As we see, we over plan without seeing the time. That's my habit. over planning <laughs> uh is the poll happening we can see only the can you see the poll we can see only the only the website yeah i mean it's the i'll just see i'll just uh, let me see how do i share it i can see it just a second Can you see? No, no. No, but you, I, I, I can see people polling. People are polling because the link is there, but on the slide it's not there. Okay, okay. Let me just check, check, ma'am. One second. Slide is visible, Renu, ma'am. The website slide is visible. Okay, I will just do present mode. The polls, ah, uh, the poll slide. Yeah, yeah. Can you see now? The poll I've slide. Shared, yeah, the poll oh, slide. I no, can we... see. Uh, I have shared it already. Poll slide is not visible, ma'am. Website slide is visible. Madam, you have to stop sharing this and share the screen again. Select okay. the window you want to share. Fine, fine. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nandi. Now is it okay? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Everybody is done. Okay. So I'll. Uh, is there a question and answer? Is uh, Nadim sir, any question from the YouTube? Uh, I will uh, 
look the thread on YouTube. Uh, by the time uh, you can uh, check the questions from Wait. here. No, so. yeah, there are there only one question. I'll stop the, the polls, Renu, ma'am. Okay, yes, yes. I'm deactivating it. Thank you so much. Any participants who want to ask any question? Anybody wants to ask any questions? Renu ma'am, can you share the feedback link on YouTube? Already, or, okay, you too. Sure, somebody is asking me for my email ID. I'll share it, not an issue. You can, you can ask me any questions you have, uh, participants. If there's anything which I'm able to answer, I'm surely help you out with it. Okay, since there are no questions, I request uh, Alfia, ma'am, uh, to please give uh, propose a vote of thanks. Thank you so much, Renu, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the members of MNET, I would like to thank Ms. Sarayu Mehta, ma'am, for volunteering her time and providing us with such an informative and engaging presentation on the topic blended learning. The topic explained by you will be of immense help to all the educators. The STAMR model was very informative and even new for me as well many of the participants. Uh, all the apps shared by you were, and I hope all the teacher participants are definitely going to use it for blended learning. Thank you. I would also want to, I would also like to appreciate the constant efforts of Mr. Nadeem Khan for providing the necessary technical support to MNIST. Thanks to the host and convener, Mrs. Renu Dhotre, for organizing the series of workshops to the platform of MNET. These workshops have enabled the teachers to stay updated with the latest methods and tools in wide areas of teaching, which can be utilized by them in the classroom as well as for teaching purposes. I would like to extend our thanks to the participants from various countries for effectively participating in the various MNET workshops held till date, the spread of which is increasing with every passing workshop. We at MNET appreciate the positive feedback obtained from all the participants. We look forward to such enthusiasm from our participants in the future as well. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone. <coughs> Have a great evening. Thank you, Alfia. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And thank you, Nadim. Thank you, all the participants. Thank, thank you, you. Renu, ma'am. Thank <coughs> you so much. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Participants, uh, on this 16th, uh, there will be a practical session on Google Classroom. So be tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>